Good morning, friends. It is Miss Katie here, and I have another Bible lesson for you all today. Um, we are going to be in a couple different books today, and some of them uh, we have already gone over a verse. Um, we did uh, earlier go over Genesis 1-1, so let's go ahead and see if we can find that one in our Bibles again. All right, give me just a few minutes. Okay, and remember, sometimes it doesn't always start with the number, and it might start with a big letter, but you can see up in the top corner of my Bible, it says right here, yes, good job, Genesis 1-1, and what does it begin with? A big I, that's right, and that one verse is in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All right, another verse we're gonna go over to today is going to be John 1, 1. So let me flip over there. And John is found in the New Testament and it is one of the books of the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are our four gospel Bible books, books of the Bible. Um, there. Okay. So let's go ahead and look for that one. And again, you're going to see in the upper corner, it just show that we're in the book of John in 1-1. One, one. And this one, yes, it also starts with a big I for in. And it says, in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay. And another one that we're going to do is Colossians 1.1. 1, 1. There will be some other verses that I might read along, um, but I want to head on over there. And Colossians is also in the New Testament, just a little bit further um, than the Gospels. It is, um, if you've learned the books of the Bibles, usually when we start with Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. So that's where we are at. And it is before 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. So my pages are kind of sticking a little bit. Just wanted to make sure, yes. Um, it is Colossians chapter one, verse 15, um, that we're going to see. So, uh, you can see here, Colossians, but then, instead of one, one, we are doing Colossians one, 15 and 16. So you can see maybe it's going to be a little bit smaller. It's a little bit harder to see. So my finger is right there above it. That one says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And for by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And there will be one more also that we're going to look at today, and that is going to be found in Hebrews. And that is a little bit further and Hebrews is right before James and after Philemon. And Hebrews, you can see, dropping books. Okay. And we'll be reading Hebrews. Um, one verses one through three. 
right here. So, um, and I'm going to show you in this other upper corner that it does show Hebrews. This starts with um, Hebrews 1 verse 14, but over here it starts with a big G for Hebrews 1 1. So, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the Father by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed here of all things through whom also he made the world." who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, set our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Um, and I think that's where we'll stop for when I go to read that. And I apologize, I was reading upside down, so that was a little bit choppy and not quite as smooth. Uh, however, when I do go to read it, I will make sure that I am reading um, where it is a uh, little bit easier for me to read so that I'm reading it upright. But I did wanna show those verses to you all for when we are going through them, just so you know that I'm not making anything up um, and that we know that God's word is true. So before we go ahead and get going on our lesson, let's go ahead and pray and just thank God for this day and ask him to help us to stay focused. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for this time that you have given us today. We thank you, Father, for your word and how scripture throughout from Old Testament through New Testament points to your son as being um, God, the son, as um, being there with you in the beginning, Lord, that he has always existed and um, that we can see uh, how your word uh, just uh, comes together and um, just uh, how we can use the various uh, books in the Bible, Lord, to uh, search and see uh, uh, the various uh, things that you want us to learn in your word, Lord. Uh, help us to stay focused and not to get distracted today as we go through the lesson, Lord. In your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, so... Many of you already know what month we are in right now. And what month? Who can tell me what month uh, um, of the year we're in right now? It's no longer November. We just passed that not too long ago. We're in day six of December. That's right. Good job. And what very exciting and important holiday do we celebrate in December? There's a couple of them, but there's one that is particularly important to Christians um, that we celebrate. And what one is that one? Christmas, yes. So um, why do we celebrate Christmas? And, and what is Christmas really all about? Yeah, Christmas is about Jesus' birthday. Now, we don't know if Jesus was actually born on December 25th, but this is the time of year that we choose to celebrate him and remember him and celebrate his birthday. And uh, who is Jesus again? That's right, Jesus is God's son. We all love Christmas, and it's such a wonderful time to celebrate. We love talking about how God sent Jesus in the form of a tiny baby, here to be born on earth and we love singing songs like silent night or away in a manger and we love seeing the lights and manger scenes and just um 
uh, everything that is either colorful or even uh, sometimes if uh, lights are all done in white, those are very pretty to also look at. So um, we just uh, really enjoy seeing some of those things and brings a smile to our face. And everybody does love a new baby. So babies are so fun. Um, I know sometimes they cry and uh, they uh, might make a stinky diaper, but they, they usually do bring a smile to most people's faces faces um, and, and they're just so sweet. So do you remember where Jesus was and what he was doing before he was born in a stable and la laid in the manger bed? Do you guys remember that? Well, God's word, and I was reading and gave you kind of a couple of hints um, before that tells us exactly where Jesus was and exactly what he was doing before he came to earth. Now let's go back over to Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we can see that one right over here as well. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1-1. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Miss Katie, that says God, but remember, Jesus was with God in the beginning. And we can see that when we head on back over to John chapter 1, verse 1. So, let's go back over to that book of our Bible. And that one says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So let's go ahead and head on over, and we can see this one. And that one says, in the beginning was the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we have the first part of John 1 in that, and uh, also John 1, 14. So um, I'll go ahead and read that verse a little bit further. But uh, we've learned that God is eternal, right? And God does not have a beginning, nor does God have an end. And no one made God, and God has always been. And we also learned that in the beginning, God made heaven and earth, and God is their creator. John 1.1 1, 1 calls Jesus the word. So this time when I read the verse, I'm going to say Jesus instead of the word to make it easier for us to understand. All right, are you ready? In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Okay, so where was Jesus? That's right, Jesus was with God. In the beginning, Jesus was, was with God, his heavenly father. He has always been with God, and he is God's son. In John 1, 3, that one says, All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So that's a whole lot of maids. But what did Jesus do? He made everything. That's right. And nothing was made without him. So Jesus was in the beginning, and Jesus is the designer, the creator, and the builder of the universe and everything in it. Jesus is God's son, and therefore he is God. When we read, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, we could also read, in the beginning, Jesus created the heaven and the earth. Jesus and God both created the world at the same time. Now, we're going to head on over to Colossians 1.16. And that verse says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. So 
Because Jesus is God, Jesus had no beginning and he will have no end. And that's sometimes hard for us to understand because everything we know here on earth has a beginning. Every one of us had a beginning. Um, I was born as a baby one day. So my birthday is in July and I was born on July 19th. And some years ago that are a little bit older than some of you who are just born. So um, let's see. Uh, I'm not going to show my birth certificate, but on birth certificates, they do show the name of the person, where they were born, and who their parents are. Most of that information is always on a birth certificate. So let's see, you can maybe ask your parents to show you your birth certificate so you can look and see what your name was on your birth certificate and see all the other little details about where you were born and the list name for your parents. So Jesus was born here on earth, but that is not um, the day that Jesus had started. Jesus lived forever in heaven with his heavenly father long before he came to earth. So even though Jesus was born here on earth, Jesus had always existed. So Jesus lived in eternity long before he ever made the earth or the sky or the green grass or the animals. And Jesus is God. Now remember I said I was going to finish reading John 1.14. We're going to head back over there and I'm going to read that to you right now. So... I should have just placed a marker, but instead I flipped the pages. So, and we don't want John 14, 1, we want John 1, 14. And that verse says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now remember, when we read the word, word, we can also place that for the name Jesus. So let me read that with putting word and switching that out for Jesus. And then Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, John 1, 1 and 14, we learned that in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. And Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. That means Jesus left the glories of heaven and took on the form of a tiny baby. He grew up to be the savior of the world, and that is some very exciting and grateful news. So, we have another verse that is our memory verse. So let's go on and we're gonna work on that right now. And this one is found in Psalm 102.25. And, okay, there we go. Of old, you laid the foundation of the earth. Psalm 102.25. Of Old, you laid the foundation of the earth. Psalm 102.25. So, what do you think of old means? It means a long time ago. Because when we think that something's old, we think that it's it's been around for a while. That's right. But um, uh, who is it talking about that made the foundation of the earth? That's right, Jesus. And you can see right here, it shows us a little picture of a baby and that um, reminds us of baby Jesus. So a long time ago, Jesus laid the foundation of the earth. So um, the calendar, December 25th, is when we celebrate Jesus coming to earth to be born as a baby so that he could give us um, uh, and live a, uh, he, he gives us life because Jesus lived a sinless life and he gave his life on the cross to be our savior. And Jesus is God 
and he came because of his great love for us. So uh, just remember that when you think, why would Jesus do something like come to earth to be a baby? Because sometimes babies aren't all that exciting either, right? Like I said, they'll cry and make stinky diapers and sometimes they just sleep. And even though they're sweet to look at, sometimes they're not fun um, to play with quite yet, especially when they're so, so little and tiny. Um, they're fun to look at sometimes and sometimes they're fun to snuggle and hold and cuddle, but they can't do a whole lot. So why would some Somebody who can do a whole lot of things come to earth to be a baby just so that he could grow up and give his life for us it's because Jesus loves us that much Jesus loves us more than anyone in the world he loves us more than our moms and dads he loves us more than our brothers and sisters love us so Jesus loves us so much and we know that our parents and our brothers and sisters love us but Jesus loves us lots, lots, lots more. Um, so uh, we can thank Jesus for that and for his love. And um, let's go ahead and pray before we go ahead and um, get into our story with uh, Michael and Emily. So uh, that way we can just thank Jesus for his love because I think that's so important to do. All right. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much that you love us and that you are so willing to leave the glories of heaven to come to earth to be a baby and then to grow up to be our Savior, Lord. We just thank you so much and uh, we can never ever repay you um, the the amount of um, sacrifice that you have given to us, Lord, and the depths that you paid for us, Father. And we just thank you um, for sending your son, Lord, uh, for uh, giving us Jesus. And we thank you, uh, God our Father and God our Son, um, that uh, you love us um, and created a way for us to be with you forever. And we love you, Lord. In your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, before we go, let's go ahead and do our story from Michael and Emily. So finally, it was time for Michael and Emily's favorite family tradition. Thanksgiving was over and all the fall leaves and pumpkins had been packed away. It was time to decorate for Christmas. First came the tree. Michael and Emily's family used an artificial tree because of Michael's allergies. Real pine trees made him sneeze and cough. One day, uh, once Daddy had the tree set up, Mommy helped him string up the lights. Round and round they went, strand after strand. It was so bright. Once the tree was lit, they added decorations. That's when Michael and Emily helped. Mommy carefully unpicked each ornament and handed it to Michael or Emily to put on the tree. Then she would say things like, no, a little higher, or no, a little lower. Oh, a little to the left. Uh, yes, there, that's perfect. And it was almost like a game. Well, almost. Daddy hung lights around the windows and put the wreath on the door. Then came the best part of all, the nativity set. Careful now, it's breakable, Mommy always cautioned. We know, Michael and Emily repeated together. One by one, each little ceramic piece came out of the box and out of the tissue paper. First came the stable, then the animals. Emily always begged to set up the animals. Her favorite animal was the little lamb. One year she dropped it and its head broke off. Emily cried, but mommy was able to glue the head back on. Good as new. Now Emily treated the little lamb like it was made of gold. There you go, little buddy, safe and sound. Now you be still and no jumping around. Emily talked to the ceramic lamb like it was real. Michael's favorite pieces were the shepherds. They looked so rugged and strong. Michael liked the shepherds because they were the first to hear about the birth of Jesus. Emily set up a few angels and placed Mary and Joseph in the empty manger bed in the stable. It was family tradition to wait to put baby Jesus' figure in the manger bed until Christmas Eve. Michael held up the tiny package. Oh, here is baby Jesus, announced Michael, but we don't need him yet. God was still making him. Here, Mommy, you can pack baby Jesus away till Christmas Eve. Wait, what did you say, Michael? Mommy inquired. I just said, here is baby Jesus, Michael answered. What did you say after that, Daddy asked this time. 
Oh, I just said he had to wait because God wasn't finished making him yet, Michael explained. Nani and Daddy looked at each other with a curious expression. Michael, do you think God made Jesus? Daddy asked. Well, yeah, God makes all babies, Michael answered. God didn't make Jesus, Daddy began to explain. Jesus is God. He is equal with God, and he is eternal. That means forever, just like God. What? Michael was confused. Then where was Jesus? What was he doing all that time before the first Christmas? Great questions, Michael, Mommy encouraged him. The Bible tells us that Jesus is part of the Trinity. A Trinity is three parts. Jesus was with his Father and the Holy Spirit in the eternity past. In fact, the Bible to, um, the Bible book of Colossians tells us that Jesus is the creator. It says without him, nothing was made that was made. Wow, Michael said as he thought what Mommy said. So that tiny baby that Mary laid in a manger bed was also the creator of the universe? Now you've got it, Daddy patted Michael's back. Michael was silent for a moment. Then he voiced a very big thought. That's amazing. Think about it. The eternal God who lived in heaven forever, who created everything with the power of his words, came to earth as a tiny, helpless baby and was laid in a feed box for animals. It is amazing, Michael, Daddy smiled. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, to come to earth in human form so he could die on the cross for our sin and rise again. Now, if that isn't amazing love, I don't know what is. I can't wait for Christmas now. It's even better than I thought, Michael smiled. All right, just a couple of questions, boys and girls. Um, what piece of nativity did Michael say they didn't need until Christmas Eve? Baby Jesus. And Michael said that God was making Jesus. And is that true or no? No, that's not true. And why is that not true? I know God makes all babies, but what does the Bible say about Jesus? That's right. It said Jesus was there in the beginning and that Jesus was always there with God. And we know that God had no beginning and no end. So the beginning that the Bible talks about is the beginning of the earth. Jesus always was just like God always was. And both God and Jesus will always be. They will never have an end. So do you remember where Jesus was? That's right, he was in heaven. And what job did he do? He helped create the universe, that's right. And do we know why God sent his son Jesus to earth? God sent him, he didn't make him because he already was. So God sent Jesus to be the savior for our sins. Jesus came to earth as a baby who grew, who grew up, lived a perfect and sinless life. None of us can say we've lived a perfect life and never did anything wrong, not even myself. But Jesus, Jesus was the only one who lived a perfect life where he did not make one mistake and did not sin at all. And he died on the cross and rose again to be our savior. All right, boys and girls, I will see you all next week. Have a good one.